Now that you understand the basics, let's look at a few more concepts that are good to review. Know that you can assign anything you want to the user buttons. So if you want to verify what indeed is assigned to those buttons when first picking up your camera, it's probably a good idea to head over to the menu and scroll through the user SW option. In the upper right hand corner is the number of pages that contain selectable items for that particular menu option. If we look at other parts of the SW setup menu, you'll see where it is possible to set the various degrees of gain that are mapped to the gain button. On page four of SW setup are the focused assist options. Turning on zebra patterning is a good way to tell if you are overexposing skin tones because it overlays a pattern that doesn't get recorded but shows in the display as a way of indicating areas that might be too bright. In some cases, you may not care, such as with light sources or in sunlight, but it's typically a good check to turn on when filming people as your primary subject. In the menu on SW Setup page 6 and Display Setup page 1, you can further refine the amount of brightness that triggers the zebra, though it's generally a good idea to keep it set to the default values. Timecode is a useful reference when editing footage. There are two modes to recording timecode. Free run means it will always be running. This is important if you are syncing multiple cameras together and generating timecode from one unit and sending it to all of the others, because then if one stops recording, you can immediately know where to line it up the moment it begins again. The other style is called record run, and it only records the timecode whenever the record button is pressed. Unlike free running timecode, with record run there is no gap in between clips. To reset your timecode starting value, select the timecode preset option from the second page of the record setup menu. From there, you can use the jog dial to scroll the number to your desired value and touch the screen to advance. The audio setup menu has some additional settings for situations where you may need further line level adjustment. If the delay of having the audio lined up with the image annoys you when listening via headphones, you can change that to be the live microphones by going to headphone mode on the second page of the output setup menu option. The default and recommended mode is to keep it set to recording instead of live. Keeping the volume option on lets you adjust headphone volume during recording. If you ever want audio to test your headphones against, turn on the test tone and then exit the menu and press the bars button near the LCD screen on top to display color bars with a tone when setting up your camera as that will provide you with an audio source. Just press the bars to turn them off when done. If the markers and safe zones or crosshairs are in your way, you can turn them off by going into the display setup menu. You can also adjust the types of guides in case you want to see a reference point to assist you with maintaining rule of thirds. One of the things you might want to do is change the focus display from showing a number to actual feet in case that makes more sense to you. To do that, you go into display setup and on the second page is the focus display option. There are many other items that can be turned on or off on the display and these options can be found inside of the display setup. When you flip the LCD screen around, it shows a mirrored image, but if you would rather it not, you can change that under the self shoot option on page five of the display setup. Occasionally, you may be in a situation where either your talent gets nervous when they see the red tally record lamp or it reflects and casts a light you do not wish to have in your captured image. To resolve that issue, simply go into the other functions menu and change the option for the recording lamp. Finally, pressing main on the display will take you to the scene files and other user buttons on the LCD screen. Know that scene one is an overall HD Rec 709 preset that should work best in any situation. This is a good starting point to consider if you ever feel the look of your camera is off and too cinema-like. If you're feeling adventurous, feel free to read more about scene files and how they are used in the manual. Then test the looks of some to see how they compare to your expectations. One last tip. If you're going to be shooting in a location that will be prone to lots of camera flashes or lighting flashes, you might want to head over to the second page of the system mode and turn on flash band compensation. Here is what it looks like with and without. This function works best if you perform it with the shutter set to automatic.